Hello everybody, nice to uh, be here. Thank you uh, Robin for uh, inviting me. 35 years ago, I was in the same position as you are. I started my own company, so I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I started the company in the litigation funding, financial services and the insurance industry. And actually last week I sold my company. Now I'm a venture capitalist. Actually, I have been participating in companies for many, many years. Uh, I've always done it next to uh, my job. I enjoy working with, uh, with other people. And 10 years ago, when I turned 50, I decided, you know, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? And I said, I want to help young entrepreneurs build great companies. And that's what we're doing now. We invest in start and scale-ups. We have an office in uh, Holland and in Singapore. Rev at the back is uh, running our Singapore uh, office. So uh, we help companies from Europe into uh, Asia and from Asia into Europe. I got a whole list from Robin on things I had to tell you. So I have to look at my notes uh, sometimes, because in Singapore you have to be absolutely sure that you tick every box. <laughs> so, let me see. Uh, oh yeah, we don't uh, invest in a specific sector. We don't really care about the sector. It has to be innovative, uh, and everything is internet related uh, these days. But what is important to us, the management team? It's all about people. Business case is important, but it's all about people. I always say I prefer a great management team instead of a great business case with a bad management team. So, if you are a startup, not with a great management team, you shouldn't be here. At least not speaking to me. <laughs> um, what else is important? Um, we look at product market fit. As soon as you have product market fit, we are the one interested in investing. Uh, you, so you need to have a bit of revenue or a paid pilot uh, for us to participate in uh, your company. We do pre-series A and series A, we invest from zero up to three million euros. So that's a bit more in Singapore dollars. Um, if you only want capital, don't come to us. We're not interested in you. We are interested if you are looking for capital, skills, know-how, and an international network. As I said, we like to scale businesses, and uh, we like to help you uh, build uh, companies internationally. Just to be sure that all the boxes are ticked, let me turn my... Uh, yeah, we have an office in Holland and Singapore, I already said so. Yeah, I say management team is important, so that also counts for us. We have five MT members in Holland and two in Singapore, Rev is at the back as I already told you. We all have an entrepreneurial background, so we have been at both sides uh, of the table. Uh, on the one hand asking for money and now uh, investing money. I see I have one minute left, so I have to be very, very quick to tick all the boxes. Um, yeah, because we are entrepreneurs, we also invest our own money. So we're not a fund. We invest our own money, so we really uh, are aligned with you, and we basically put our balls on the block. <laughs> so... That has also a great advantage that uh, instead of having a, a timeline of five to seven years, you know, we supply more patient capital and we really like to, uh, you to be able to build your uh, company. Um, people sometimes ask, how can you invest in different type of industries and sectors? Well, it's, it's quite simple. It's not us who should know uh, your market, it's you who should know the market. However, we have a pool of people 
we can uh, work together with. Uh, a known group get in the ring. Uh, World Startup Factory was here, and now my time is up, so the rest of the things have to come from questions. So, thank you very much. I, I, I want to win, so we, we, like to, we like to be with winners, so I like to win, and I like your company to win as well. Thank you. Questions, not only from the jury, also from the people, come on. Thank you. So um, you were saying uh, you do uh, next to him. So so the money is, is obviously important, but you also like to focus on providing a lot of additional services. Can you be a little bit more specific on so how do you help a scaling company, or how do you help them make new, acquire new business or that, that kind of stuff? Generally speaking, generally speaking, you know, uh, scaling a company has the same uh, issues uh, over time. When you grow from 10 to 50 people to 100 people to 3, 4 or even more people, you know that at certain stages you need to do certain things. Uh, entrepreneurs are, and I, I'll be one myself, uh, are strange people, they like to do everything themselves. So we try to help people uh, scale their business by telling them at the right moment what they should try to do. So that they avoid uh, doing things wrong. Uh, we don't tell them how to do it. Uh, we advise them and then it's their uh, decision, obviously. We sit at the table, uh, but it's their decision. So, and as I said, we have a pool of uh, specialists. So if they need specialist help, we take the specialist who can supply HR services or IT or whatever the startup needs. Does that answer your question? Uh, it seems to me that you guys focus on management, which is agile. So, um, for example, um, suppose you choose a startup that has a fantastic uh, management, but along the way, they kind of like screwed up. How do you step in to help them? Sorry, what, what did you say? When it goes wrong? Or? Yeah. Okay. How do you find the solutions for it and how do you step in? Well, we just uh, sit at the table and have strategic uh, discussions. It's uh, very often that a startup has to pivot uh, its, its, its product, so we try to help them do that. Um, we just warn them in advance, you know, where things could go wrong, so that we try to avoid as many obstacles as, uh, as possible. Um, well, the, the question I asked the first picture as well. What is your what is the, the investment you're more proud of? What company? Uh, I'm not proud of uh, one investment. I'm proud of all my investments. <laughs> uh, I think you know an entrepreneur who starts a company, you know, uh, is, is is doing a great job anyway. So it doesn't really matter whether he's successful or not successful. I prefer him to be successful, of course or whether he's hugely successful or not. Uh, I think it's a great step forward, you know, if you if you start a business. And that's to me is the most important thing. Uh, up. Oh, oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much Edward. Um, so the next pitch is by Navin Danapal from SOSP. So, I'm the C director uh, for SOSB. I'm in town because of FinTech Fest, and apparently there was this slot here, they told me to come, come so here I am. Thankfully, it wasn't in time I couldn't do this. So, first thing is, uh, what is SOSB? Uh, it's a global footprint of accelerator programs around the world. It's backed by US Fund, 615 million AUM. And these are based by sectors of strength around the world. Uh, the one I'm going to focus on is primarily what we look at Southeast Asia because the rest is just too many areas to cover, but I'll go through it roughly what we do. There's two red dots there. One is Taipei, where the program runs for Southeast Asia, and the second dot is Singapore, where we do the demo day for it. In fact, the second demo day. We actually do a demo day in Taiwan as well. So, okay, next. Yeah, okay. So this gives an overview of generally all the programs under the SOSB fund. It's a US-based fund. Um, China Charter is, of course, based in China, but it also looks at the enterprise market. 
We have, we have Hex, which is based in Shenzhen, San Francisco, and Tokyo. Purely hardware, IoT, robotics, and stuff. Then we have synthetic biology in London and San Francisco, life sciences, genetics. We have food in New York, which does things like all the new impossible meat that kind of stuff. And finally, we have a D lab in New York, which does enterprise blockchain. Uh, not crypto, but enterprise blockchain. So the one I'm focused on is primarily on the MOX, which is a B2B and B2C in Taipei and Singapore, covering the emerging market of Southeast Asia. Okay, let's put that will put. Yeah. Uh, just some stats to see where we rank in the different areas. Um, yeah, so what they do tell about us. So we are ranking this and we have nearly a thousand investments. Uh, but the good thing is that our IRR is quite high because of the diversity that we have across the whole world in different sectors, verticals, and emerging markets. It's one of the reasons why we have very high returns. We have fundraised a total of about nearly one billion from over 2015 to 2018. And this is what we have helped raise for the startups globally, cumulatively, to date. For just this Q1 beginning alone, we have 200 million raised already. We work with many corporates and startups, uh, primarily for corporate division. So a lot of corporates are turning to us for our portfolios to help them innovate and fast-track R&D. And in exchange, our startups get access to markets through these corporates. And this happens globally with different markets. <coughs> We have a network of 300 mentors, and we continue to procure and source new mentors. Our mentor expert, T.R. Harrington, is a new onboard in our program. He's actually in Manila today for Tectonic, and if we're doing a mixer there, he's going to try and source new more mentors from the Philippines market. So we're always open to industry people who want to be part of our mentor network. The two uh, prominent people in our network, William, you're supposed to be here, he flew off. So I'm taking over instead, <laughs> and the founder is Sean, and if you're wondering, that's how SOSV comes about, Sean owns Sullivan Ventures. So there are two prominent people in the network who run majority of the global programs. The one I'm focusing on again, I'm mentioning, was probably Mox, and it's basically a global accelerator to focus on mobile startups to enter emerging markets. So we are looking at Southeast Asia as the first market, but we're not limiting it to it, because we're also looking at India as our next phase, or, the, or South Asia and we eventually will look into other emerging markets like LATAM and Eastern Europe. So the four things to keep in mind is that we do investment, we begin about 100k plus, but then we do a follow-on upon the performance. We are rolling programs, so we are kind of evergreen. We don't tell startups that you come in, you're out, and you never come back. No, they're always free to come back with different modules we have. When they're part of our alumni network, they get access to all these firms. And uh, we do two demo days for other mocks, Taiwan, followed by Singapore every February and August. So Mox focus on these fields areas, uh, emerging markets, we use a lot of targeting analytics, acquisitions, and partnerships. And this is our approach to it. Results, this is what we get from it, and some numbers we need to see. We have over seven batches, 52 startups from 18 countries. We have 5% acceptance rate, so we do reject and the survivability is 84%. Global startups all around the world, coming to Asia. Total, they have fundraised by nearly 50 million post-program. 8.6 leverage. Total value, nearly half a billion. This is what we bring them into the emerging markets to get to know the markets, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and examples of case studies here, but I'll focus more on this guy who was in the room here, that's Xander there. So you know one of case studies who got invested by here and they do micro location and kind of emerging market Indonesia. That's it. Questions? What is your selection criteria uh, to a uh, startup based in emerging market? So if a startup is based in the emerging market, typically they already know the market quite well. If a startup is outside the market, what we look at is what value can it bring to the emerging market. So if it's a high rate technology, it might not be applicable. Could they localize it? Could they find a local partner for it? If it's a local startup, what we look at is can they expand beyond the immediate market? Do they have the market knowledge and expertise and expand market? So we look at two angles. If you're local, expansion. If you're global, how can you localize?
So you accelerate the startup and then invest, or do you invest and then accelerate? So it's a package. Uh, we call it uh, it's investment through acceleration. So we invest there, and once we invest in them, we consider it as a part of the acceleration program. The various modules, whether it's fundraising, growth hacking, Southeast Asia tour trip, they're all part of the modules, and it's all part of the acceleration. I assume it was really, really clear. Thank you very much, Nadine. Um, I want to I want to share a short anecdote about SOSP, and more in particular about William. So you have seen all these people walking around with these uh, uh, white shirts. The women in our team don't like them. At any AME thing, they're really great. Uh, when we got them printed, uh, the printer made an error on them. Uh, and you can see that on the back. So the, the printer basically printed .com for a website, which is not our domain. And then I ran into William, I think you're in Technasia here in Singapore, and he said, why don't you just cross it out? Turns out it was a really good hack. Uh, actually, people now notice much better that our website is .com and not .com. So stuff like that really helps, even little things like that. Um, the next pitch up is Martin from HH Investments. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Good to see a lot of Dutch people. I've been living in Singapore for a while and haven't been back in the Netherlands, so it's, uh, it's nice to connect. Um, I'm going to introduce myself and I'm going to do that a bit more detailed because we make investment decisions that are really personal. They're all very subjective. Um, so it's sort of good to know, I guess, who I am and then we can go see from there what fits with us. So. I'm going to run through quite fast. Um, born in 1986, I've been developing software since I was eight. Um, started my first company in high school in 2004. Studied law in Amsterdam. Had my first exit in 2012. We had a legal tech company. Um, I lived, traveled, and worked in the US for two years. Um, then I lived in Taiwan for about two years. Um, got married there. Um, moved to Singapore, and I've been here since about four years. Um, started a business called Carpel and uh, we started a family office uh, which is basically the main entity for our uh, investments. Why? Well, we built, we've been building companies. Um, I've been going through failures and successes. I've been at the point where I couldn't buy my groceries and I've been at the other side of things. Um, 